Okay, this uh, lab we are going to do today. Create stress. The purpose of using stress is to uh, improve the usage of the CPU and the computing efficiency. If a task can be uh, divided into several parallel tasks, which means that the subtasks uh, can be executed in parallel. Through this way, just like when we have a big project, we can separate it into several sub-projects, and uh, each member in the project group can take a sub-project. At the end, the project leader need to aggregate the results by each member, so it's similar like that. In this uh, lab practice, uh, creating stress on Windows using Windows API and C Sharp to compute the average or large amount of data. Here, large amount, we may have millions or billions uh, atoms of data. Here, as a practice, we have only uh, 10,000. Certainly, you can change the number to a larger number. So, we have two. Uh, Subtasks. Here, the first one is uh, to use Windows API. The second one is, uh, is to use C Sharp. And two templates are provided to calculate for the Windows API to calculate the average number of one, two, three, and one uh, and ten thousand with uh, ten threads then use a calculator to verify your result. And you all know the formula of the sum of 1, 2, 3, and uh, 10,000. It equals 10,000 times this number, right? So the average of this 10,000 number, you just divide the summation by 10,000, you will get this one. This is the average value. So similar, the second uh, task we use C sharp to calculate the average number O, the average number O, 1, 2, 3, and uh, 50,000 with 10 stress. So let's create a folder for today's lab. lab 03 and again we need to uh, copy these two templates you can see a uh, cell link has then you open with a uh, code What, what do we get? We get a web page. So this is not the right way to download the code. So the right way, always use uh, that git here. And as 330, this is uh, all the materials on our GitHub website. You right click, open a git bash here. We can use a uh, git checkout git pull. Okay, now you will get the updated uh, materials. So go to our labs, lab 03 code. So we copy this. Uh, Photos. Control C, come back to lab 03. Control V, paste it here. And I delete this uh, one. We downloaded it one day. You can 
Right click lab 3 to open with the code. Then you will see all the subfolders. Yeah, for this uh, win a template, this uh, win sum is provided. We have demonstrated uh, the code of this uh, win create stress. Actually, this win sum is modified from that win create stress, so you know how to compare and uh, use it. Here now let's see how to modify this program to calculate the average from 1 to 10,000. Here in this uh, code Actually, we used this code in a lecture, right? We know how to pass the data into threads. Here on the maximum threads, currently we have uh, 10 threads. And this is the required thread, so then you can change it to a larger number to add more threads. But the lab requires only 10 threads. Now, we want to pass the number. How do we allocate those uh, 10,000 numbers to these uh, 10 threads? How do we do that? Here, you can see this uh, summation. Uh, it uh, finds the summation of 1 to 10,000. We can run this program and have a look to see what the result is. Then, you can go through the code to see how it works. Open the develop command prompt. And copy this location here. We need to go to inside this win. Control C here type cd right click paste it here always use dir to verify you are in the right place I receive win sum dot c is here so we use a cl to compare this uh, win sum dot c now the, the completion is done now we can run it winsum.exe uh, you see uh, the result here start one and uh, one thousand this is the first threads to calculate the summation of the first one thousand uh, number from one to one thousand and the second thread it calculate the summation from 2001 to 3000 and you can see the sum and the result is started from 0 to the end 10,000 and I get this uh, total summation can you verify this summation is right or not you can use the formula here yeah, the formula I think I didn't. I didn't put that for me. The summation formula here. You can like this plus two plus n, and find the formula. Here you go to this uh, Wikipedia. Right, you will see the formula is this one: n times n plus one divided by two. So, and I calculate the summation from 1 to 10,000. So we can use a calculator to verify this uh, summation. 10,000 times I need a parenthesis.
10,000 times parentheses 10,000 plus 1. Then divide by 2 equals we get this one 5,000, 5,000. This is the result. And you can see here the total summa summation is 5,000, 5,000. So this is right. But here it says start from zero. Even though we know start from zero, it does not matter. But as we required to calculate from one to uh, 10,000, so it's better change this one. From start from one and end at uh, 10,000. And at after you find this, uh, after all these uh, threads complete their result, you see the program wait a little bit until it complete. So the reason is we simulated a uh, wait, which is this uh, work time. So let's uh, change this work time to uh, just one. And let's save it. Now, how do we find the, let's correct the last pass part here, start from 0 to 10,000, actually starting from 1, right? So from 1 to 10,000, we get the total sum. Where we get the total sum? Here, after all stress have terminated, so we use a for loop to take the summation of the result of those uh, 10 threads. That's why we take a for loop to iterate all those, the results of those uh, threads. And uh, the summation of those threads, they are saved into that this uh, array, P data array, and the first item. Then we, sum, we get this total sum. So how do we return that summation of each thread? So we need to go to the thread function, right? This is a thread function. Here the thread function, it uses this parameter to pass the data into this uh, thread. For example, the first thread is passed uh, 1 to uh, 10,000. So we only need 1 and 10,000. And it can be held by this uh, data. Here you can see from here, this P data array. We use this uh, first uh, member var1 to hold the start and this var2 to hold the end. The first thread starts from 1 and end at uh, 1000. Right? Then we find its summation. Once we get the summation, we print it out, start from which number, end at which number, and get the summation. After we get the summation, we save this summation to this uh, variable. We overwrite this variable. So this variable now, it saves the summation from this thread. So this is how the thread receives the information, the allocation task from the main thread and return the summation to that main thread. So we, this is the job inside the each thread function. Now you can go to this uh, main program. Here is the main program. We create uh, 10 threads. Then for each thread, we pass the data like this. We know i is iterated from 1, uh, from 0 to 9, right? Here, 0 to uh, 9, because totally 10 threads. So for the first uh, thread, i equals 0, i equals 0, 0 times 1000 plus 1 is 1, and 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 times 1000 is uh, 1000. So for the first thread, 1 start from 1 and at 1000 is passed to the first thread. Here you can see thread i, it get this p data array. And this p data array hold the start natural number and the end natural number. 
of that uh, number, series of numbers, the thread need to calculate the, its summation. And uh, for thread uh, 1, thread 1, or for thread 2, for thread 2, this is i equals 1, right? i equals 1, 1 times 1,000 plus 1 is uh, 1,001. So you can see this result here from 1 to 1,000, from 2,001 to 3,000. So if, if this one equals 2, i equals 2, uh, if i equals 2, 2 times 1,000 is uh, 2,000, 2,001. But where is that 1,001? Here you see it's not ordered as 1, 1,001, 2,001. Because these threads, they are scheduled, not necessarily follow this order. And we will, uh, because it's not follow first come, first service, because we're not using uh, some, use some other schedule scheme. That's why we didn't see the follow the order we specified here. So to make it clear, clearer, in this output, we may say which thread output this uh, information, right? But here we we didn't pass the thread information to this uh, thread. If we want to print out which thread generates this information, we need to add more information to pass into this. Uh, data. For example, we can uh, add one more atom, say ID. But this ID is not the true thread ID assigned by Windows. It's, this is the ID we just create. Let's consider the logical ID, which are assigned from 0 to 9. Right? So the ID we assign from 0 to 9. So, if so, then we can pass not only the start number, the end number, we can also pass the ID. Right? P data array and I, then we pass this uh, ID equals I. And this I is from 0 to 9. So now we have this ID. So inside the thread function, we can also get that ID. So in the print, we can also print out thread, which thread, right? Now we can also supply that uh, thread ID, p data array ID. So now we, you will see the clear. And if you want to make the more readable, you may add one more data member to save this summation. Here, I just save the summation into this where one, because now I will not use this where one since the summation is all is already uh, found. But through this way, we can save some memory resource. So now if you uh, save it and run it, you will get the result quickly and we will see a more uh, readable output. So we can uh, compare it, then run it again. Now you see it gets the result right away. Tell us, um, now you see thread 0, thread 1, thread 2, 3 and so on. Right? This is more readable. So we get the summation. Now how to get the average? Using that formula, we can change this one to average, to find the average. Right? So uh, we can find the average at the end in the main thread here, 
in this main thread, we can already know the total summation. So we can uh, add one more uh, variable, say inter average now we calculate the average after we get the total summation here we get the total summation in that loop then we can use this uh, then we can calculate the average with that total sum we need totally we have uh, 10,000 numbers, so we need to divide by 10,000. So this is uh, 10,000. We divide by 10,000 numbers. Here, did you see any problems here? Here we use the integer division. So if there are fraction numbers that will be discarded away. So a good idea we, we, is better use the float number or double number. So we double average. Then in this uh, average, we can denote this 10,000 as a real number. Now we can print out the average here control V we can say uh, the average oh, 1 2 3 dot 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 and here this uh, 10,000 Yes, right. Now this time we need to change this one. Change it to F. Maybe change it to G. Uh, is uh, better. You can find why we use. Uh, uh, find how to specify that type in the print. You can just uh, copy this print, control C, and find its usage. Control V, let's say format string or format spec specifiers. Then you can go through uh, one reference to find. Here you can see uh, a list of these specifiers about the data type. And uh, for further information, you can read through this uh, web page. Here for decimal floating number, we can use F. Right? If we use G, is okay. We will get the shortest uh, representation. So I would like to use this. Uh, G. And now we can uh, run this program. Compare it and run it again. Here you see uh, the average of one, two, three, and there ten thousand is this. Uh, Five thousand point five. Is this right? Now we need a calculate to verify it, right? So we already know based on that formula. So the average of one, two, three until ten thousand is two to the n plus one. So, which means the average would be a 
one plus ten thousand divided by two. So get five thousand point five. So it's right. So here verify the result using a calculator. So for task uh, this is two point one is done. Now let's uh, go to two point two. First, let's uh, check the program here. Now this time we go to the C shop. Use this template. CS sum dot CS. And first, let's run this program to have a look. CD, go to its parent folder, then go to a CS. Always use DLR to check where you are. Here, this CS sum dot CS. We compare it CS C, CS sum dot CS. Okay, it's compared. Now let's uh, run it. So you see uh, again we get similar result, right? Main stress does some work, then wait and uh, get this uh, five thousand or five thousand. So this is the same as the previous one, five thousand or five thousand. But uh, this time we are asked to calculate. From one to uh, fifty thousand, so we need to change the program. Here, there's a program. We have a thread with state. Here, you can see a uh, state information used in the task. We have a start, have end, have a summation. Now, thread with state, the constructor we pass this start and end number, and in the thread function thread proper we find this summation sum to pass from the start to the end number then write out the summation so the summation right out here the start the end the sum but you get some output like this here we didn't see a this output, right? This is some um, this uh, right line. So this sum to string, start to string, end string to string. What this thing is? If you check this one, it's not clear, right? So we need to uh, modify the code to make the. Uh, now let's see uh, what's inside this uh, main program, what it uh, does. Total summation is zero, then it creates 10 stress state and 10 stress. Here we pass the number into each thread. But this one is still uh, 10,000. We need to change it to if the last number is 50,000. So what the, how do we allocate these numbers to those stress? We divide it by 10, we will get uh, 5,000. Just like this one, divided by 10, we get 10,000. Each thread calculates the summation of 10,000 numbers, consecutive uh, natural numbers. So, in this case, we need to change it to uh, 5,000, right? Yeah, we change this one to uh, 5,000, which means each thread is going to calculate 5,000 consecutive uh, natural numbers. Because we have 10 uh, threads now. Here you can see the threads create and start and join. Join means wait until they complete. Now the main thread it says does some work. 
then wait, we may add a sentence say or child stress terminated or child stress terminated and the main stress does some work so Don't need this done does some work. We just say uh, ten threads, ten child threads are terminated. Here join, right? After the join, uh, the t we know only after the join the sub threads are terminated, but not before the, the join function means wait until the sub threads terminated. Here ti dot join means wait the eyes subthread terminate. Once every subthread is done, we try to find the total summation. Right? Here, get the summation and print out the total summation. We may add uh, some uh, explanation. Say now in C sharp, how do we concatenate string? We use plus, right? So you can see, uh, just say one plus two. Maybe this way is uh, good, is better. Let's say the sum. Anyway, let's write like this: one plus two plus three plus until. 50,000 equals like this. Here we get the total summation. Now, how about uh, each substrate? Do we want to uh, output something? So if we want option, yes, we do have some outputs, but it uh, not look. It's not what we want. We may uh, write like this. We can say the sum from the start. And we and concatenate and the two that uh, end. So two this end dot string and x and we. Then say is concatenate with this uh, sum. And right now let's uh, run this program to have a look. Compare it. Then run it. Now you see the sum from 1 to 5,000 is this one, sum from 5,001 to 10,000 is this one, and so on. And in this uh, C sharp, you see the stress looks like uh, the line in water as the water will create them, right? Then, all child stress terminated, and uh, the summation from 1 to 50,000, we get this number. And now we want to find the average. Again, the average we only need to find in the uh, main thread. So we can add a double, let's say, uh, average equals. Actually, we don't need to need in initialize it because we don't uh, use it right now. 
data average. Now again, we can uh, calculate uh, the average after we get the total summation. Average equals total sum, now this time divided by 50,000. We add a dot zero, which means uh, we denote it as a real number. Then we can add one more line to print out the average. Just control C, control paste here. We say the average of one, two, three, until fifty thousand. Now this time we say is right. Is this uh, average to string here? Average to string. Going to and save it. So through this way we can find the uh, average. So let's. Uh, Compare it, run it. So you see the average of one, two, three, until uh, fifty thousand is this number, twenty-five thousand point five. Again, we can use a calculator. We can use a calculator to verify the result. Again, we use that formula. 1 plus 50,000 divide uh, by 2 25,000.5 so we get the result uh, if you want to say thread 1 calculate this one, thread 2 calculate this one how do we do that? We will need to pass this i into the stress, right? So how do we pass it? Here we know how to pass the start number and the ending number through this uh, constructor. This is a thread with state constructor. So we go to here. This is a structure. We can add one more uh, member function. Oh, not member function. Just one more data member private int let's say id this is a thread id now we also need to initiate this id through this constructor so now we have this how do we distinguish this id and this id a quick way we just use the i so id equals i now here you can uh, say thread thread i now how do we uh, give the i i dot to string and plus On this time we say it uh, it calculate calculates so you say thread i calculates sum from this store number to this end number and uh, now how do we say this we get this summation right calculates and uh, get converse. Here we have this i. We need to pass this id through its uh, constructor in this initialization. Here it's a uh, this constructor. We need to uh, pass this i 
to this TWS thread with state. And now we can compare the range to again. We have an error. I does not exist in the current uh, context. The line 37. Line 37 here. This I is should be ID. Now we put this ID uh, here. Thread state here, the ID is here, and the private data number. So we can use it like this. Let's say what we passed to this place. Yeah, it's an ID. Compile again, done. Then we run it. Here you see thread 0, 1, 2, 3, and here 9. Then all the other threads terminated. So this is what we, we need. And we also verified the result with a calculator. So this is a task tool. Now for the review questions. We have two review questions and also please pay attention to the review question in 60%. It's a major part of this uh, lab. The first question using Amdas law, calculate the speed up gain of uh, an application that has 60% parallel component. Here please pay attention. Without your calculation steps will be greater than zero. So you need to show your calculation steps. So first we need to find the Amdas law and its formula, then use its formula to calculate these uh, two situations. The first situation we have two processing cores. The second situation we have four processing cores. So you can scroll down all the reference and add it here. Down here you see Amdas law, Amdas law here. And you can see its formula here. This is a formula. This is a speed up. And this P is a parallel component. This N, S. This S is the number of threads or number of calculating cores. So we use this formula to calculate. The problem here. Okay, I would like to show you with a uh, Python terminator, the Python uh, interactive console window here. If you didn't install Python, you may download this Python 3.9, install it. I think I will install this Python. Let's check our lab 01. Lab 01 here, you are required to install Python 3 for our person. So, Python 3 you installed. So, come back to our Lab 03. We use this uh, Python interactive window as an advanced calculator to calculate this uh, equation 1. Here, you can see the parallel part. Parallel equals six percent. Six percent means uh, zero point six, right? So, and the number of cores. Let's use n. Well, we use s as the that formula says here, as this formula. That uh, s s equals uh, two for the first case, right? S equals two for the first case, and this p p is the portion of execution time that the part benefiting from improved resources originally or 
occupied. Actually, this means this the uh, parallel component. So maybe we use p to represent that parallel. So we can just uh, so substitute into this formula. So s equals two and p equals zero point six. But certainly you use parallel and s use a number of course will be more readable, right? But this way is more concise. Okay, now with these two, we can calculate that speed up. Let's just call it speed up. Equals that formula one divided by, now we need a parenthesis, and inside the parenthesis, another parenthesis, one minus p, and a plus p divided by s. So we can just write this way. Move the cursor to the end, then press enter. So we get this speed up. We just uh, show speed up. Press enter. You will get this result. It's 1.428. The speed up of the first case. Now for the second case, we have four processing cores. So you can just change this s equals uh, four, then recalculate that speed up here, because this p is, it still holds this value zero point six. Right, we didn't change it, so we press under, then bring up speed up. Show it. 1.818. So this is a speed up for the second situation. 1.1, uh, 1.818. And you can check the reference solution here. All Q answers. One point four two, one point eight two, is rounded up to two digits. Here, the first case you round up to two digit it should be 1.43 so this is not exact the result so you need to be a 1.43 and the second case 1.82 run to up to two decimal digits this is uh, right so there are only a reference quick answers so you need some something uh, like this 1.43 1.82 now for question two, for question two, suppose that the following process is arrive for execution at the times indicated here, the arrive, arrive time. We have three processes. Each process will run for the amount of time listed. This is the burst time, the burst time or the time they run. And in answering the questions, use non-preemptive scheduling, which means if a process is being proce processed, it cannot be kicked out by other process. And base all decisions on the information you have at the time the decision must be made. So when the decision will be made, we need to base it on the schedule algorithm. Then we have three sub-questions. For the first one, what it is the, what's the average term run time for these processes with the first come first service scheduling algorithm? So we, how do we solve this problem? intuitively. There is a one way we can draw a Gantt chart for these uh, current situations. Here at the time you just consider they arrived into a bank. This P1, P2, P3, you just imagine they are person, person 1, person 2, person 3, at the right time arrived in the bank. Once they are inside the bank, they need to wait the person in front of them complete their transaction. Right? 
So using this imagination, you can uh, solve this question uh, intuitively. Now let's uh, try to solve it. We need to make make clear what this turnaround time means. Here, this turnaround time means the time you arrived from you the arrival time until you complete your task. So we can a good way is. We can use any text editor. For example, here I create a new empty file and uh, put them here P1, P2, P3. And for P1, it arrived at time 0. So only one process. So it will be processed right away. And it's first time is uh, 8, so you can use the 8 dashes to represent its first time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, at time uh, 0 0.4, this P2 comes. Now, when it comes, it need to wait, right? And also at time 1, this P3 also comes. And uh, so when P1 is being processing at time 1, after P1 just complete uh, one dash, then P2 and P3 come into the bank. S so we may uh, draw it something like this, S looks more clearer. Oops, wait, wait. Because uh, it's not uh, fine enough to show it. Let's just uh, use something uh, like this. Uh, please make sure, please uh, be aware this is not uh, accurate. Now, for P2, it will wait until P1 uh, complete. Then, P2 is the second one. First come, first service. So, P2 will be processed while P3 is waiting. P2 need four uh, time units. After P2 is done, P3 can process. So need only one time unit. You can draw something like this. But because this uh, 0 0.0, 0 0.4 is not just uh, one complete unit, uh, integer unit. So in this part, we cannot represent it uh, precisely. Now we can find the turn around time based on this uh, Gantt chart for P1. For P1 is turn around time. Here let's say turn around. Turn around time for P1 from arrival until uh, complete. So total is 8, right? Because it come then be processed right away. So it's 8. And for P2, it comes, then it wait until P1 process, then start his processing. So for P2, it needs so many uh, time units, 4 plus. Now the tricky part is here P1 is 8 time units. And uh, when P1 is processing the 0 0.4 times past, so which means it's uh, 8 minus 0 0.4. This length of P2 need to wait while P1 is processing. Right? So we will get 4 plus 8 mi minus 0 0.4. What do we get? We get 7.6. So total, we will get 11.6. So this is P2's turn around time. Now, how about P3? When P3 comes, one time unit at 
one time unit. So which means P1 finished one time unit. So P3 need to wait from here until P1 complete. So it would be seven minus one, oh, not seven minus one. It's eight minus one, right? Eight minus one plus when P2 is uh, processing, P3 need to wait. So plus four, then plus one. So this lens, the term around time of P3. And it equals 7 plus 4 plus 1 equals 12. Right? This is P3 is so turn around time. And what's the average turn around time for these processes? So the average uh, turn around time would be uh, 8 plus 11.6 plus 12 divide by 3. This is the average uh, turnaround time. You can use the calculator here. 8 plus 11.6 plus 12 divided by 3. We get a 10.53. 10.53. You can uh, compare with this uh, reference answer, 10.53. That's right. Now, the second one, what's the average turnaround time for this process with shortest job first scheduling algorithm? So again, we can use this uh, one to draw and uh, applies it again the chart. The first one is F C F S. So please draw them in your word document clearly. Now for the second one is sh short job first. Now again we can uh, draw the again chart. P one P two P3 again at time 0 P1 comes and start process 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and complete when P1 is being processing P2 comes at 0 0.4 and uh, P2 need to wait needs to wait and P3 at time 1 also needs to wait right now when P1 completed, here, when P1 completed, at this time, P1 completed, both P2 and P3 are in the waiting queue, right? They are waiting there. Now, who will be processed in short job first? You see, P3, its job is short, shorter, just one time unit, so P3 will be processed after P1 complete, it needs only one time unit. Then P2, after P1, uh, P3 complete, P2 will begin its uh, processing. Need four time unit. So this is the Gantt chart of, of P2. Short job first. Now in this case, the turnaround time Gonna be the turnaround time. You can see for P1 the turnaround time is still eight time unit, right? Because it comes and uh, gets served. Now for P2, for P2, its time would be here. It need to wait until P1 complete, until P3 complete. So it would be. Uh, P1 plus P3, 8 plus 1, and a minus because it comes at 0 0.4, minus 0 
then plus it's a uh, processing time four Oops. plus four right this is a turnaround time which means from p2 comes until p2 complete so the total time is a four plus here p3 is processing time and p1 is processing time and a minus this is 0 0.4 because of while p1 is processing p2 uh, comes at 0 0.4 so now we get here 9 minus uh, 0 0.4 we get uh, 8.6 plus 4 we get 12.6 Right, we get 12.6 oops now for p3 p3 is uh, turn around time here p3 turn around time would be uh, here because p3 comes at time unit 1 and uh, during this time P1 is uh, been processing, so uh, 8 minus 1. And plus P3 is processing time here is 1 unit plus 1, so equals 8. So this is the turnaround time of these uh, three processes and uh, this uh, SJF scheduling algorithm. Now the average turnaround time would be. 8 plus 12.6 plus 8 divided by uh, 3 right so this is uh, the average turnaround time copy it so I suggest you type something add something say this is the average in your uh, report to make it more readable and also add some more explanation here is just a concise time situation to you now we want to find that uh, uh, average number I just copy here this formula paste here right click it will be pasted here press enter we get 9.53 so the result is uh, roughly 9.53 Again, you can uh, check with the reference solution 9.53. The last uh, question. Last question. The SGF algorithm is supposed to improve performance, but notice that we chose to run process P1 at time 0 because we did not know that two shorter processes would arrive soon. And time 0 0.4 and time 1.0 compute what the average turn around time will be if the CPU is left idle for the first time unit then the SJF scheduling is used remember that process P1 and P2 are waiting during this idle time suppose the company uh, uh, you just imagine the bank uh, counter uh, need to uh, wait a little bit with one time unit to get it ready but when the counter wait for one time unit all these three persons come into the bank right so their waiting time may increase this P P1 and P2 and this uh, algorithm could be called future knowledge scheduling because we need some uh, further information actually because during this waiting p2 and p3 comes please note during p1 and p2 are waiting during this idle time which means their waiting time may increase so if we draw the Gantt chart This time uh, we create a future knowledge scheduling.
P1, P2, P3, Okay, in this uh, case, the wall weight, even though P1 comes at time 0, comes at time 0, and P2 comes at time 0, 4, and uh, P3 comes at times 1.0, but all of them need to wait for one time unit until the counter get ready or the CPU get ready for one time unit, then which one will be processed first? Here, the shortest job first, P3 is the shortest. So P3 will get processed. Then P2 is shorter than P1. So after P3 is done, P2 is being processed four time unit. Then P1, the longest one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the Gantt chart. Uh, uh, P1, P2, P3, and this is a future knowledge scheduling situation. Again, to find the turn around time. Here the turn around time. For P1, what's the turn around time? Here, do we need to uh, you say P1, P2, they are waiting during this other time, which means their waiting time may increase. So, But as P3, it comes, then get uh, processed right away. So which means P3 just need a, is, the turn around time is just one. Now for for P2, how long it wait? It comes at 0 0.4, so it, it need to wait 1 minus 0 0.4, right? Because the CPU is idle for, for one time unit, so during that add time, it need to wait 0 0.6, and also then it need to wait until P3 get complete. Then, Yeah, the his time, his time is a uh, four time unit. This one minus zero point four is P two's wait time. This one is uh, it wait until P three get complete. Then this four is its uh, self's uh, processing time. So in this case, you see it's uh, five point six. Now, how about P one? P one, it comes at zero. And one at a time, right? One time unit at a time. Then wait until P3 get complete. Then wait until P2 get complete. Then his own time is eight time unit. So in this case, is a fourteen uh, time unit. Now, what's the average turnaround time? It would be fourteen plus five point six plus one. Divide by divide by three. So there's the average turn run time, the last uh, case. Now can paste here, and you see the turn run time is a six point eight uh, seven. Compare with this one, 6.86. So if you round up, it should be a 6.87. You round this is 6 up. Okay, we complete all these uh, review questions.